Hello, my name is uh, Robert Thompson and um, I have lived and worked in the West End for over 20 years. Um, I have a company, Insight Cultural Tourism, and uh, before the pandemic, we did live tours of the West End community. Um, this is uh, our first virtual tour and um, we'll probably be on the virtual platform until it's safe to get back out in the street. So um, I, I call this particular tour my West End, okay? Uh, it's a little history, it's a little culture, it's a little current events. Um, uh, history is only useful if we use it in the context to help understand how we got to where we are. Uh, and so I hope that this uh, tour of the West End uh, will give you uh, some context of how we got to where we are. So um, come on, let's go check out the West End. Here we are at uh, the Hammonds House Museum. This place is a historical and cultural landmark in the community. Um, the museum has been around for about 30 years, but the house has been around a lot longer. The uh, original structure was built, mm, we think around 1850, and um, was uh, the home to several prominent uh, Atlantans. Uh, the last uh, occupant of the house, um, and it's uh, on the National Register of Historic Places and one of the oldest um, surviving houses in the, uh, in the city, um, was a Dr. Otis Thrasher Hammonds. And um, Dr. Hammonds uh, bought the house around 1979 and it took him five years to restore the house to its current condition. Um, the original house only consisted of the first three rooms and you can kind of see from the floor pattern where those uh, older pieces are. Um, the house is considered to be a East Lake Victorian and is uh, characterized by the very uh, ornate molding that you see throughout the house, molding and woodwork that you see throughout the house. The uh, museum has a, uh, a gift shop. And if you're looking for that uh, unique afro center griff, it's a good place to, uh, to check out. As I said before, Dr. Hammond uh, actually was uh, in the vanguard of what I call the uh, first gentrification, or as we might see a little bit later, the third gentrification of uh, this area that we call the West End. Um, he uh, actually organized uh, trips to try to encourage African-Americans to um, by uh, in the West End. Um, this is a, a considered a restoration as opposed to a renovation. Um, a lot of the fixtures that you see here are, while not original to the house, are from the period. Uh, Dr. Hammonds traveled all over the world to try to replace the uh, fixtures which had been totally uh, removed by vandals <laughs> over the years with period pieces. These are um, gas lamps that uh, were refitted for electricity. And they're, you know, they're, the, the furnitures in themselves are uh, works of art. The uh, museum uh, usually has at least uh, three to four shows a year. Um, and uh, it also functions as a uh, 
event venue. Uh, and in a sense is uh, more than just a museum, but a, um, a community center also. And, and so you can always find a uh, Fulton County uh, or a city of Atlanta or neighborhood meeting going on um, during the day. The, uh, this room is called the Green Room, and uh, it gives you a good idea of the depth and the breadth of uh, his collection. Everything from traditional uh, African art to um, early photography, Guerrero types of, of African Americans are extremely rare. We don't know who these people are, but we're, you know, we're working on it. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, his collection consisted of traditional African art pieces like this. The furnishings that he, he purchased for the house, while not necessarily African-American, are again, as I said, works of art themselves. Uh, to more contemporary African-American pieces, such as this lithograph. As I said before, the house is often uh, used as an event venue. Um, and I'm sure when the pandemic is over and we can do it safely, again, the house will be again open to the public. <laughs> But as you can see, uh, this is a, a photograph of Dr. Ham, who was a leader in the community for quite some time. He was a board member uh, on the High Museum and was the patron to many up and coming black artists when black art was not as uh, collectible, shall we say, as it is today. Um, he probably has one of the largest private collections of Romar Bearden uh, work outside of the family. And in fact, there's a, a Romar Bearden um, uh, on the mantle in the uh, upstairs, what was what at that time would have been the upstairs bedroom. But it is definitely should be a stop on your uh, visit to the West End, a must stop. There are very few places in the city quite like it. This, con this blend of uh, uh, basically European style and African elegance uh, is, is pretty unique. And as we always say, there's always something happening at the Hammond's house. Um, in addition to the exhibits, there are conferences and, and talks and book signings, uh, films, videos, uh, lectures. It is quite a dynamic place. And one of the uh, outstanding features of the Hammonds House is its backyard. Uh, we can seat up to 300 people here in 12 foot rounds. Um, but it's, it's a meeting place, again, um, giving the museum sort of a community center type feeling. Um, and uh, it is also a major uh, uh, income source to help sustain the programs uh, of the museum. And uh, when we're open during the week, it's just a, a really nice place in addition to, you know, seeing the zip exhibit, uh, just come out and just chill in the backyard. It is really an oasis um, in the community. This, as I said before, used to be uh, a private home. Uh, Dr. Hammonds was really known for his entertaining um, and speaking to other people uh, in the community. Um, it, uh, it was one of the places to be. Now, the this particular intersection of um, Ralph David Abernathy and Lee Street, I consider to be 
one of the most historically significant um, intersections of the city. This is really where Atlanta started. Uh, before it was Atlanta, before it was the West End, it was Whitehall. And the plaque you just saw uh, commemorates the spot uh, where um, there was a building called Whitehall, which was the um, it was the tra it was the stagecoach stop. So this is before the railroad. It was a tavern. It was the post office. It was the election district where you came to vote. It was the militia training center. Um, it was the first commercial building in what is now Atlanta before Atlanta even existed. Um, it was where uh, the engineers that built the railroad stayed. The workers stayed downtown in what was in lean to what was called terminus, but the, the engineers and the surveyors, they stayed at Whitehall, um, which, you know, we've had various descriptions of what it looked like, but it was probably a rough cabin uh, painted white, which is how it got its name. And as you see, um, the streets sort of symbolize sort of where Atlanta and the South is. And, and I always say that the West End is sort of a, a microcosm of the history of the city and the country. Uh, the intersection between the civil rights movement and uh, a, a, a antebellum visual version of what the South was. Uh, Atlanta uh, was founded um, as a railroad town. It was one of the first major inland cities, basically uh, due to the railroad. And it has always been a, a transportation, or as they say now, logistics hub. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I should have burnt to the ground, <laughs> uh, because it was such a strategic city. Um, and uh, this is the, one of the first railroads to uh, come into uh, the city, and it still exists today. The CSX Railroad rents it from the state, which is state's own. And um, transportation is still uh, important. There's the MARTA train that takes you to our international airport which will take you anywhere in the world. And it's, it's transportation that really has made and continues to make um, Atlanta a key city in the United States. Um, another must stop in uh, the West End is the Black Holocaust exhibit at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. Um, the history of enslaved Africans is sorely missing from uh, the history of America. And it's not just black history, it's American history. And uh, if we really want to understand how we got to this point, then you can't understand that unless you have a thorough understanding of both the positive parts of our culture and the negative. And one of the most negative is the Holocaust that uh, happened here in this country. Uh, when we think about Holocaust, we think about Europe and Germany, uh, but there was a Holocaust that took place here. Um, also in the shrine, uh, they have a gift shop, another place to go uh, shopping. Uh, you didn't wanna go to the crowded malls, you want to support local artists, um, here's really the place to be. Um, there are imported uh, Africa um, articles, uh, but there are also a lot of uh, original art by the local artists. And so for Kwanzaa or Christmas or, you know, whatever, um, it's a great place to, uh, to, to shop. Um, the bookstore that is probably better known than the gift shop, uh, every major um, African-American artist, author uh, has come and spoken at the shrine. It's sort of uh, a stop on the book tour of any significant African-American book and has been for years and years. The, the shrine is part of a larger uh, 
denomination called the Orthodox Christian African Church uh, with headquarters, I do believe in Detroit. Um, and uh, they have been in the community for over uh, 30 years. And our, our major uh, social stabilizing, uh, stabilizing um, spiritual force in the community and have been. And as said before, they have an extensive um, uh, African-American and African uh, collection. And it is a, uh, a definite stop for any African-American Here we are at the corner of Ralph David Abernathy and Peoples, um, and another landmark in the community and uh, in the city. And this is Howell Park. Howell Park was the estate of uh, Evan Howell. Um, and just to give you an idea of you know where the West End fit in in the community, Evan Howell went on to be the mayor of the city of Atlanta. Um, the West End actually uh, was created uh, uh, after the Civil War around 18 cities. It was one of the first developments uh, outside of the city and uh, was actually a separate city of its own. Um, recently, there's been, uh, as a lot of people know, a, a gentrification. Uh, this is a, a shot of uh, one of the new spots, Gallery 992. And one of, the, one of the things about the West End are its murals. And the, the community is full of them. And I think we're gonna have a, a, a segment just on the murals. Um, this is Willie Watkins' funeral home, one of the oldest buildings in the city, um, built around the turn of the century. Uh, and uh, Willie Watkins uh, has been in this location for at least 30 years, and they give a gospel concert uh, in Howe Park every year, which is attended city has citywide attendance. Here is another one of our murals, famous murals. Uh, the masks were added as of the pandemic. Um, and it's just a sort of a symbol of, of what the cultural West End is. This is the, uh, the Wren's Nest, probably one of the most famous uh, West End residents was Joe Chandler Harris. Uh, he was primarily a journalist, but made his name uh, uh, with the, um, the book, the release of this book's called uh, Uncle, Tom, uh, Uncle Remus Stories, Tales, and Burr Rabbit. Um, and these stories are African, uh, African-American folk tales, actually. Um, and uh, these were stories that he, he was a, uh, grew up on a plantation, uh, was a redheaded uh, Irish boy. And uh, back in those days, they were uh, the next level. Irish were like the one steps above <laughs> blacks in a lot of parts of America. And so he spent a lot of time in the slave quarters. That's, I guess, where he felt comfortable. And he wrote these stories down and um, made a uh, name and a fortune for himself. Uh, a lot of uh, his um, writings have become, uh, you know, controversial. Uh, though at his, during his time, he was considered a radical. Um, uh, separate but equal was a radical idea in the 1870s, believe it or not, particularly when you take in consideration uh, what the status of African-Americans were prior to that. So to even think that they, even though they're separate, that they could be equal was considered a radical idea. Uh, of course, now um, those ideas are not uh, accepted in the mainstream. However, um, the, uh, the site remains a, another really gem in the community. Um, we call the backyard our, um, our mini Chastain. Uh, there uh, is a major event there every year. Uh, 
the Western Neighborhood Association has their annual fundraising dinner there. It's quite an affair. This is a uh, reading circle. There are uh, one of the main things that they do are storytelling. And this is where um, mostly uh, the kids come with their parents and they sit in a circle and they tell stories. This is the new West Hunter Street Baptist Church. And I say new because the original uh, church was um, on what was West Hunter Street. Uh, so this name changing, uh, this idea of um, changing the names of institutions uh, is not new. This um, used to be Gordon Street uh, Church and um, when the community changed in the 60s, uh, West Hunter Street Church moved from West Hunter Street to what was then Gordon Street, which is now Ralph David Abernathy. So you see the pace of change. Um, the, what was West Hunter Street is now Martin Luther King. So um, following the names uh, and this sort of re-examination of American history and who we honor um, started back when uh, African Americans uh, gained political control of the city. Uh, they felt that they should not uh, be honoring people who they considered uh, who exploited them. And so um, the church uh, got a new name um, and the street got a new name. Um, and that's part of the transition. This is Brown Middle School, um, historically important for a number of reasons. Um, it was um, started out as a junior high school in 1925 and um, was a high school in the 60s when it became one of the first uh, Atlanta public schools to uh, integrate, I think in 1961. The tree you see in the, in the yard was planted by uh, the community uh, when the school opened in 1925. Um, it's a magnolia tree. Um, there is now a controversy, uh, if you will, a discussion about the name of the school, Joseph E. Brown. Um, Joseph E. Brown was the governor of uh, Georgia uh, during the, the Confederate War uh, and also governor after, during, uh, right after Reconstruction, was a rapid um, segregationist uh, and made a fortune off uh, convict labor, which was primarily African-American. So there are people in the community now that are looking at uh, do we want to continue honoring him? And finally, there is the belt line. Um, as I said before, this is sort of my West End. There's still so, so, so much of the West End that needs to be and can be explored. But I just wanted to touch on the main um, ideas and the main uh, locations. Um, we do several different types of tour. We do an art tour, we do a history tour, and we do a farm and garden tour. But the Beltline is the newest addition to the West End. Um, some of its critics uh, sarcastically refer to it as the new Trail of Tears um, because they feel that it has fueled gentrification and the removal of, of certain segments of um, the population. Uh, when I moved into this area 20 years ago, uh, this was uh, weeds up to your neck and there was a homeless village back here. Um, now you have this uh, uh, beautiful uh, amenity that any community should be proud of. And, um, but we wonder so also what happened to the, the homeless people who used to live back here. Um, so it, it's a, it's a, you know, what the, what the belt line will be and how, what will it be, its long-term impacts on the community. I think that story is, uh, is yet to be told and that the 
West End is sort of a microcosm um, of the past and can model for the future either for a positive or negative um, as we go on. So it's a it's an emotional, spiritual place for me. Um, and I think it's a definite uh, place for you to come and visit and, and learn more about the city of Atlanta, uh, its people, and how they are going to be um, impacted uh, in the future. Um, I think it's a great place to be um, and will continue to be a great place to be for the foreseeable future. So uh, welcome to our virtual tour. And uh, when it's safe to get back, I uh, hope to see you guys uh, in the West End.